Hello, David Zaritsky for The Bond Experience. Welcome back. I'm lowering my voice a little bit because it's early in the morning, like 4.46 a.m. in the morning. An ungodly hour for most people, but when I wake up, I wake up. This video is all about hashtag Bond 25 Fitness Challenge. And let's start off with the name. I mean, there was a lot of discussion in the last few weeks. Um, obviously, uh, the name of the new Bond movie came out no time to die. And there was a little bit of a discussion, but only a little bit. There was, well, do we change our fitness challenge that so many people have been embracing to the new name? And there was a resounding no. I went on to Instagram, I took a little bit of a poll, and I think maybe there was one person out of a lot that said, yeah, let's switch it to the new name. Everybody else was like, no, this has become a bit of a movement. I mean, we've embraced you know, Bond 25 Fitness Challenge. It's, 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 our, it's our mantra. It's our call to action. So why would we change it? Let's see it through. And anyway, the new movie is Bond 25. It's still the 25th Bond movie. So we're going to continue the role. Let's get that out of the way. The other thing is I've seen some amazing, amazing inspirational folks that are posting hashtag Bond 25 Fitness and their journey, uh, sometimes when they fall, sometimes when they get to a new peak, uh, their weight, their health, their fitness, their food. I love seeing that. If you haven't, go on to Instagram and start following hashtag Bond 25 Fitness Challenge. It's amazing to watch and it's very inspirational. You know, just when you think, you know what, I think I'm gonna go for that extra fry, you think about these people that every day wake up with new discipline and verm and vigor to really get into the best health and wellness leading up to Bond 25 and beyond. I mean, let's face it, this is, the whole idea is we call this Bond lifestyle, but this is about becoming a lifestyle of health and wellness and embracing this. And that's the other thing. I want to talk about prioritization. There's been a lot of discussions and I love when people open up. There's some great podcasts around this around, oh my gosh, I'm having trouble prioritizing my health and fitness, whether it's eating right. Sometimes I just don't have time to eat right. Sometimes I don't have time to work out. 30 minutes a day of working out and a little bit of forethought pre-planning around your health and wellness is huge. We posted a video around Be More Bond, which goes over diet, nutrition, not even diet, but nutrition, eating healthy, uh, eating consistently. And that's, that's what this is about. Everybody's going to falter. Everybody's going to pick a fry off their kid's plate and have a sip of a milkshake because, spoiler alert, you're human, we all are. But the problem is, is that if you drive that home and say, you know something, I blew it this week, I'll start next week, it'll never happen. So creating some sort of consistency is huge. Another little helpful hint, because I've seen a lot of people doing this, I see a lot of people doing cheat meals or cheat days. Now think about this, if you're doing one cheat day a week, a seventh of your time, all that work that you're putting into eating right and, and working out is going out the window and it does set you back. The other thing about cheat meals is when you say, I'm gonna have a pre-planned cheat meal and eat all these cookies and fried chicken and pizza, well, that's all well and good. Guess what? You're gonna have an unplanned cheat meal. You're gonna slip up. So then what happens? You have two, three, four times a week. So you wanna be very conscious of that and also, do a little bit of reading up on diet nutrition. Just because something's called a salad, like a Caesar salad, doesn't mean it's good for you. Caesar salad has as many calories and fat, um, and not sometimes the greatest fat, uh, th than a Whopper. So uh, be conscious of those types of things. So if consistency and activity are really paramount, they're important, that means you should be able to do hashtag Bond 25 Fitness Challenge wherever you are. It doesn't matter if you're on the road, or in home or at a resort, it doesn't really matter. You should be able to do it on a wing of a plane. So one of the things I wanted to talk about in detail today is environment, surrounding. Hashtag, uh, we have people everywhere, uh, patent pending James Bond complex. So the reason I say we have people everywhere is you can do this anywhere, but you've got to really choose a point and a place, a surrounding, an environment that you feel comfortable in. Now, um, don't let the uh, odd job slam man fool you or the posters behind you. You are in my unfinished portion of my basement. There's nothing really overtly sexy about this area and I kept it like this on purpose. I could have put walls up, I could have put fancy floors. It's not like that because I wanted it to be a little bit more Spartan-like. The other thing is 
I couldn't drive 15 to 20 minutes every day, go into a locker room, change, do my workout, wait for a machine. I mean, I've done that all before. I did that for years and it just became a slog. And I found myself saying, well, you know what? I don't have an hour and a half today to work out. So one of the things you're gonna see on the TV right here is uh, P90X3. Now I accepted P90X3 years ago because number one, it's, um, it's great for uh, prioritization from a timing standpoint. You could do it in a hotel room. Um, obviously you can do it in a basement. I don't have to go to a uh, country club or a gym to do it. But the other thing is the, the types of workout, not just for my age, but it's, it's really good movement. It's, it's balancing, you know, it's, it's weights, it's pull-ups, it's using your own body weight, it's using regular weights to do this. It has all that form and function that I'm looking for in a workout. So for me, it works perfectly, plus 35 minutes a day. So guess what? I do this seven days a week which is an amazing thing. But my environment is so conducive that when I come down here, yeah, it looks like I have a couple distractions, but it's kind of cold and spartan. I don't wanna to spend too, too, too much time in here. It's specifically for my workout. And by the way, as far as what I have to do that workout, it's pretty simple stuff. So there are a couple investments I did make. These Bowflex weights are so great because you can change them to all types of things. You can do 25 pounds, you can do all the way down to five pounds and all the way up to 52.5 pounds, which is fantastic. So I like this because I don't have an entire rack of, uh, of obviously weights. It's small, it's concise, but it really does the trick. I know it just made I look like I was doing like 20 of those. I just did one for the camera. That's just being honest. So this is my pull-up bar. I love it. It is uh, a Stamina PT1690. You saw Bond using it. Um, there's a lot of usage of this in P90X3. Um, there's a lot of different formations. You do it like this to do chin-ups. You do it like this to do pull-ups. Um, you do kind of like thumb wide ones. I mean, it's a killer. These are very tough at any age, but what I love about this is you're using your own body weight. So this was one of the things I did invest in and I absolutely love it. Plus it's pretty necessary when you're doing P90X3 to have it. This is probably the simplest investment I made, but it was a simple pad that I could put on a very cold concrete floor. And obviously what it does is it creates something where I don't have too much impact on myself. Plus I'm constantly down on my hands, my feet, doing push-ups, doing balancing. There's a lot of balancing in P90X3. And you can see it's in a pretty small area that can be put into uh, any apartment or house or basement. So it really fits the bill. So I'm constantly using my own body weight, whether it's in a hotel room or here at home. But if I am here at home or in a gym, I use these perfect push-ups. Now I'm not here to endorse these, but these are fantastic because they have these discs that are constantly moving. It makes it actually a little bit harder, um, a little bit more focused on your balance, which I really like. But in some ways it's easier because it has these nice, soft, gentle, rubberized handles. You put them on the ground, you can do you know, the ones that are close, the ones that are far, you could do staggered, you could do Spider-Man, you can do a whole bunch of things with these. But again, it just takes up a little bit of room and I absolutely love them. When I go to these, I get almost on a high because you're slowly doing your body weight and mass and that's a great way to build up your shoulders, your back, your arms, hell, almost everything. You can even use them for balancing and planks. So these push-ups, these uh, perfect push-ups by Body Rev, I'm addicted to them. Might be a bit of a duh, but I mean, obviously workout gear, but a good pair of sneakers is very necessary. Um, I happen to choose these, not because I particularly like the brand, but um, they're really good as far as working out. On some of the balancing exercises, I don't wear any shoes or socks at all. I like bare feet, especially on this type of mat because they're yoga based, they're isometrics. But if I'm working out with weights or the pull-up bars or push-ups, etc., I do like to wear these type of sneakers. It's not a running shoe, it's not a court shoe, it's somewhere in the middle. Um, but find a good pair of sneakers that are comfortable, but also give you really good support, especially if you're doing quick movement. And that's important for me because balance and, uh, and that type of an aspect really go away when you reach your later years. 
Okay, one of the other aspects is making sure that whatever you're wearing is comfortable. Now, some of you are working out in a gym, and I get it, it can be a bit of a fashion show. Me, I like things that are relatively loose fitting. I don't wanna wear anything that's too tight or too restrictive. You wanna be able to like reach and grab and things like that. So something that's not too restrictive, including your pants right now, I'm just wearing flowy little shrublands pants. Um, but you wanna do that, you wanna be able to move, shuck and jive. This isn't always a fashion show. Actually, it never is a fashion show. This is about working out. One thing I keep as a standard is water. All the time water, I don't deal with any other uh, fancy hydration drinks when I'm working out. I just want water, maybe a little bit of lemon or mint in there to treat myself, it is the weekend. But um, it's a bit of a dust statement, but you've gotta stay hydrated. If you feel thirsty, you're already dehydrated. It's kind of an old adage, but constantly keeping hydrated and drink, 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 drink. And I drink constantly throughout the day. That is a good part of nutrition as well. It helps to flush out some of the evils especially if you had a, a little bit of tipple the night before, but hydration, make sure it's around and you drink before, during, and after your workouts. Now, when I do my isometrics or uh, balancing, uh, which is every other day, um, I don't take protein right afterwards. It's more of a um, anaerobic burn or if I'm walking in the forest or something like that, or you know, doing some sort of a, a jog, et cetera. I don't really jog though, you've seen me, I walk fast. I don't take the protein, but if I am doing my P90X3 and I've just done a workout like I did this morning, um, I'm trying to get as much muscle mass going as soon as possible. So I do subscribe to the idea of within 15 to 30 minutes, I take protein. Now you've probably seen me or heard me talk about this stuff. This is a protein kefir. It's low fat cultured milk smoothie, uh, 1.5 gram of fat. But what I love about this is it's got 42 grams of good protein, plus it's really good for my gut. Uh, kefir is really good for your gut. I like this, and by the way, you can see it's, it's a probiotic, so it actually helps with the flora. I'm gonna deal with science for a second. The flora in your stomach basically should stand up like grass. It should look like a field of grass, and what happens is when we eat bad things or you know, have too much uh, combustionable things not, not like gasoline or diesel, just bad things in your stomach. You could throw off the pH. You can, and you, you want a certain amount of acid. Everybody's like acid indigestion. That was in the 60s and 70s. You want a certain amount of acid. You want the pH to be level so it all works together. Your body knows best, but that can be thrown off and the floor starts to lay down. The grass starts to lay down. So probiotics help to, um, to, to really get that type of balance back. Everything's about balance, your body, your strength, your muscles. So and it's delicious. And I, I look like I made a wincing face, but I actually really like the taste of that. There's a little bit of sourness there that kind of wakes you up in the morning, but the protein's great. 42 grams, a lot of people are gonna be like, that's a lot. Um, you should have a decent amount of protein a day, especially at my age. Um, and I keep saying that, but it's true. As you get older, the protein starts to break down, you, you know, you don't utilize it um, as well as when you were younger. So you wanna make sure you don't bolus protein, uh, you don't wanna have an excess, excess of it, but you wanna understand the right amount of protein for you. I like me some kefir. So the other thing that we've gotta talk about is, I'm still in a basement. I mean, this is a basement. So it's not a matter of just doing your health and fitness here in your environment. You also need to get outside. I'm a big believer in that. It's a, it's a very interesting thought process that it's good for your mind and body. It's why you see me take walks so much. So what do I mean by that? bathing, getting out for at least an hour, possibly two, and just doing some good old-fashioned hiking. There's nothing like this. In other words, just getting out of the basement. So there it is. There's not a lot more complicated than that. I mean, get your surrounding, get your environment, get comfortable with it. Obviously, you want an environment that's both inside and outside. That's really good for your health, wellness, and lungs. 
and also therapy, peace of mind. But you also want to get your consistency, prioritization in line. And remember, find your why. Why are you doing this to begin with? If it's just to look like James Bond, that's only a short-term fix, but it's for you, your family, to get into the best health and wellness of your entire life, and maybe use the fun Bond community to get you there, then use us as a support and crutch, but plan your plan. That is the biggest thing. So anyway, this has been David Zeritsky for The Bond Experience, and we will see you very soon. Take care. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from the Bond experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you just because we know you. Talk to you soon.